Hello everybody, thank you for joining tonight, this is your host Nino, who very evidently is having quite a cold, <laughs> but still I hope this will be a very worthwhile episode, for in this one, and indeed also in the next two episodes, we shall be looking at punch cards, and in this episode the topic shall be this Arduino which is indeed an Arduino punch card computer this is not just a reader this is where the computations will take place and so it is going to operate essentially like a machine in the 1950s but let me explain a little bit the setup and then we shall be having a bit of a demonstration. Now, the Arduino itself has been loaded with a variant of my evil programming language. And it is connected most essentially through its analog pins to this yeah, quite self-made, right? A punch card reader, which I devised. Essentially, it's just a series of LEDs, of lamps, lighting on a series of light-dependent resistors. I'm sure I can show them to you. Yeah, now you see them, sort of. And depending how strong the intensity of the light is, which is shining upon them, the resistance is cha changing and this is being noticed by the analog pins. I have taken some care to encapsulate each LED in a sort of chamber and as well as possible to separate the light dependent resistors from each other so to have more clear separation of the values. Also this slider here where the card goes in is slightly bowed now in order to allow for easier insertion so that's not the same punch card reader as in my green sleeves video it's a new design and most significantly it operates only with six channels that is 6-bit characters rather than 8-bit characters so there has been some economy done and I have come up with a bit of a own encoding scheme for the characters so this is not ASCII or any other 6-bit encoding like DEC or whatever else you may have seen that you may already know as to the encoding itself because EVO and its variant Svetanka are operating on numbers only, I could actually go for certain simplifications in the encoding and I shall explain now my number scheme because I think if you want to, to do things that way this might be actually pretty intuitive. So in each, like each such little square here can be potentially cut out and it goes this way we need just the numbers from 0 to 9 we need enter and we need the possibility to have negative numbers so 0 is the mo most upper channel and then 1 is this 2 will be this only one hole is punched uh, 3 4 and 5 and once you want to have higher numbers like 6 and so on the fifth one remains punched and then again you're going through one two three and four and that way you're having one plus five two plus five three plus five four plus five and then that's how you reach nine so so for instance here you're having a four here zero first second third fourth punched okay here you're having a six for instance and then you're having here um one punched and five punched and they are added and when you do it that way it actually becomes quite intuitive to read the punch card 
physically yourself. So it's easier for yourself to keep track of what is happening. So if you want to have a negative number though, then you make another hole in the zeroth field. So evidently then, zero is also negative zero, right? But that's not a bad thing, that's correct. And if I'm having here a negative four, it is going to have the punch on the fourth field and on the zeroth field. And the same here, for instance, for minus two, the second for two, yeah, hope you see that. Second for two is punched and zero is for minus two. And enter, I went for something symmetric. These are just the two center holes, okay? And this is going to be an extremely simple program where we will be setting up two numbers, six and eight, <coughs> in two memory locations. And then as we run it through, these numbers will be added and we will be printing out the result. And that is what this program shall be, right? So, well, it's time to establish our serial connection. We have now explained everything, how this is working. Evidently, I'm just going to be running the cards through this thing. And the only thing you have to pay attention to is to get the zeroth channel, really to the zeroth channel of the reader. All right, now let's go for our connection. That's just PicoCom. I'm quite fond of this for serial connections. Let's show the whole command. All right. Yes. So those minus eights signal that the machine is ready for accepting input. And now I shall take my reader and now I shall glide through the first punch card. You can watch the screen, it will show you what it is reading. So on the first address, the command is 9, which is addition. It will be adding memory locations 3 and 4 into memory location 5. The command has been accepted, the next command is being read. It is uh, on the second address, a jump going unconditionally to address 255. And that way we will be jumping over the whole address space after our one addition command in order to have the whole thing terminate faster so so you know like basically it does its addition then it jumps to the end of the execution space and thereby the execution is over okay now minus two showing as the result on number five like on address five is still zero we haven't added anything so there's no result then in minus four, that means set up a value. In address three, we are setting up the value of six. In, we're setting up another value. In address four, we're setting up the value of eight. So now we have seen that the result field is still empty. We have set up six and eight. Time to add them. That's gonna be an immediate jump to the beginning of the execution space. Zero one, zero one six. So jump to the first address unconditionally. It shows us then the two commands that executed first on address one, command nine. That's the addition, and then on the second address the jump to the end of the address space, and that was it. That's how execution terminated. So now in address five. Is contained the value 14 and I will be running th through this card again which means that the whole computation will be also repeated but this card in its beginning is showing you that the 5 is empty and that's what we're interested in so now the 5 will not be empty 
and that will be written 14. I was just, you know, too lazy to make another card where I am just showing the result. Okay, because evidently I don't have a card punch. This is just me and my scalpel and a bit of patience. Okay, let's look again at address 5. Ta-da! The result of 14 is there. Well, yeah, I know I can let it run through again, but it doesn't matter really. So, yeah. That is a successful demonstration. The whole thing operated as expected. So now, Arduino has been united with the 1950s to bring you the true power of computing. And I hope you enjoyed today's episode. In the coming two videos, we shall be further exploring punch card computing. However, then the Arduino will be merely in the role of a reader, not actually in the role of computer. But this I leave to the future episodes, where I hope you shall join as a regular guest. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing you there. And until then, from me, have a great day. Goodbye.